يصنى الكل ويبقاه ليس الباقي إلا هو الله 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 ما لي رب إلا هو So we're talking about the tafsir of Hudal bin Muttaqeen. And we said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this uh, ayah of Surah Baqarah is saying that in it is guidance for those who truly fear from Allah. Okay? And I explained uh, briefly yesterday the explanation of who is the the, 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 the and what is taqwa okay now I'm going to continue from where I left or I'm going to backtrack a little bit and then continue from there remember what we said yesterday that although the meaning of taqwa many different uh, meanings have been given many different interpretations have been given of what taqwa really means okay uh, remember we said, some of, some, some of the scholars said that what taqwa means? To fear Allah. Some said to abstain from sins. Some meant to acknowledge your sins. And some meant, some, some meanings were, one of the meanings was that not to be proud about your ibadat in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, etc. Means, there, there were many others that, that, that uh, explained what is taqwa. Adherence, adherence to the command of the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Sahaba Ikram all this they said were the different meanings of Taqwa okay? but after saying all this uh, what did Sadullah Fadil Radiallahu Anh say? he said all these meanings are interconnected to one another which we said yesterday all these are interconnected to one another and on the basis of their effects they do not contradict each other in any way okay? they do not contradict each other in any way they are all interconnected okay one in the same in reality. Now, what we stopped at yesterday was here, and then we said there are also many different levels of taqwa. Mm-hmm. There are many different levels of piety, meaning fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm-hmm. Now, we're still talking about Hudalil Muttaqin. That is why all this is coming in the tafsir of Hudalil Muttaqin. Okay? The taqwa, we're saying that they are, the, the Mufassirin are saying that there are general levels of taqwa. There are different levels of taqwa. They say the taqwa of the general public. You and I, the, gen- the, the taqwa of the general people, mm. the masses, is to bring iman. Mm. That is their taqwa, that is their piety, to bring iman mm. and to abstain from kufr. Mm. To believe, mean, to bring iman means to believe in what? To believe in Allah, Allah. and His angels mm. and His books, mm. etc. until the end. Okay? So, the taqwa of the, of the masses, of the awam, is to bring iman and to stay away from kufr. To stay away from unbelief, okay? Yeah. This is their taqwa. Yeah. Then the scholars have said, the Mufassirin have said that the taqwa of the mutawassitin, okay? The taqwa of the mutawassitin, in other words, those that are in the middle, okay? The mutawassitin are those that are in the middle, in other words, those that are between the general public and the ulama. Yeah. They are in the middle. Yeah. They are not counted just in the general public and they are not counted in the ulama, I think. Yeah. But they are in the middle. Okay? So it is stated concerning them that their taqwa is to obey the directives and the abstentions. In other words, whatever has been given as the open directive, they must, they must uh, accept it and they must stay away from the abstentions. Okay? That is their, their level of piety. Okay? Now, the, the taqwa of the khawas, the taqwa of the special elite servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning the ulama are going up. Okay? What is their taqwa? Their taqwa is to leave every such thing which caused them to become neglectful of their duties in the court of Almighty Allah. Anything that caused them to become neglectful of their duties in the court of Allah, they will abstain from it. They will abstain from it. This is their level of taqwa. Now look, there were three different levels of piety that we explained here. Now, Sadrullah Fahad, this was from uh, Tafsir al-Jama'ah, okay, as explained by Sadrullah Fahad. Now, Sadullah Fadil radiallahu then goes further to state that the translator of the Quran, which translation is was he giving the tafsir on? On Kanzulima. And so who is the translator? Sayyidi Allah Hadrat radiallahu Imam Muhammad radiallahu He says the translator, in other words, Imam Ahl Sunnah radiallahu has stated that there are seven levels of taqwa. 
he has stated that there are seven, seven levels of taqwa. Okay. Now I'm going to count up the seven that he has explained. He says the first is to abstain from kufr. The first level of taqwa is to stay away from kufr. Okay. And he says which by Allah's grace is something which every Muslim is blessed with. If you're a Muslim, then you are blessed with that. If you're truly a Muslim, then you are blessed with that. But that level of taqwa you have already because you have abstained from kufr. And you have got the gift of iman. Okay? He says the second one is to stay away from bad madhabi. Is to stay away from deviance and the deviancy and heretics. He says that is the second level of taqwa. He says, Alhamdulillah, he's explaining this is blessed to every Sunni. Subhanallah. This is blessed to every Sunni. So a Sunni is one who stays away from Bad Mazhab. Otherwise, it's questionable. Okay? Because he's giving you an explanation. Eh? He says, the third level is to abstain from every major sin. This is another level of taqwa. To stay away from all the kabair. Okay? The major sins. The next fourth level of taqwa is to stay away from the sahair also. To stay away from the minor sins also. Okay? The fifth is to stay away from, to stay away or abstain from shak, from doubtfulness. <coughs> from doubtfulness, in other words, stay away, for example, to understand, to stay away from places of doubt. Where you know that by going there, doubt will be cast upon you. Yeah. Then that level of taqwa is even to stay away from <coughs> there. Okay? The next level, the sixth level, is to abstain from lustful desires. To abstain from lustful yeah. desires, the desires of the lust, in other words, your haram animalistic desires yeah. that are not allowed, those which are forbidden desires, yeah. to stay away from them. Mm -hmm. And the seventh one is to avoid the very high level of taqwa. Yeah. A very, very high level. high level of taqwa is to avoid turning towards others for favors. Yeah. Is to avoid turning towards others for yeah. favors. This is This is for the most special servants of Allah. This is for the most special servants of Allah. And what is stated at the end? That the Holy Quran is a guide in all seven levels. The Holy Quran is a guide in all seven levels. Okay? It is a guide in all seven levels. Now, I'm going to continue quickly since we have some time on the first part of the, the the next uh, verse of the Holy Quran that is there. Remember, we said first Alif Lam Mim. No translation. Alif Lam Mim. Okay. ذلك الكتاب لا ريب That exalted book, the glorious Quran, wherein there is no room for any doubt. Udal muttaqin. And it is guidance for those who truly fear Allah. Next verse. Very clearly explaining. الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَيُكِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ Okay? Now, translating, those who believe الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ Those who believe without seeing. In other words, those who believe in Nazi. Those who believe without seeing. And who keep namaz well established. And who keep namaz well established and who spend in our way from the sustenance which we have given them. And who spend in our way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, from the sustenance which we have given them. Now, this was the basic translation of those of that verse. Okay. Now, regarding this, we're going to take it one bit at a time. It is stated in the tafsir that from Alladina Yuminuna Bil Ghaib. Okay? Alladina Yuminuna Bil Ghaib until Muflihun. We haven't gone there yet. In reciting the actual translation, I'll go back there tomorrow. From Alladina Yuminuna Bil Ghaib until Muflihun. All the verses here are in connection with the sincere and the true Muslims. All the ayats from Alladina Yuminuna Bil Ghaib until Muflihun have to do with who? The true Muslims. The sincere Muslims. Those who have brought faith absolutely. In other words, those who have brought Iman in the true sense. They have truly brought Iman. What is meant by that? Those, in other words, their inner and their outer self is with Iman. They have Iman 
from the apparent and they have iman on the inner inside as well. Mm. Okay? The two verses which follow this after Muflihun. Mm. The two verses which follow this. We'll discuss this as we go there. But they are giving us something to think about the Mufassirin. The two verses, now all the verses from Allah Dina Yuminuna Bil Ghayb to Muflihun have to do with the two believers. Mm. And the two verses thereafter, they state that the two verses which follow have been revealed in connection with the open kafir. Open kafir, the manifest open unbelievers, those two ayats are about them. Those who are unbelievers, apparently, and from within also. In other words, from the outside to the kafir, from within to their kafir. Thereafter, now look carefully, from Alladina Yuminuna Bil Ghaib till Muflihun. Okay? Alladina Yuminuna Bil Ghaib. Okay, I'm going back there. From Alladina Yuminuna Bil Ghaib till Muflihun, these verses have to do ulaika ala huda mi rabbihim wa ulaika humul muflihun up to there, okay? Have to, that's up to ayat number five, okay? So, what we say? Ayat number three, ayat number four, and ayat number five have to do with who? The believers. Ayat number six, okay? And ayat number seven have to do with who? The open kafir. Okay? So three ayats, three ayats there in the beginning have to do with the pure and then the true believers. The two ayats which follow have to do with the open kafir. Listen carefully. Okay? Thereafter, the 13 verses from Waminan Nas, three Muslims, two about the kafir, open kafir. Thereafter, the 13 verses from Muminan Nas are in regards to the Munafik. How many verses are for the Munafik? 13. 13. Why so many warnings from the court of Allah about them? They are the most detrimental. They are the most dangerous. Understanding this? Two about, three about the believers, two about the open kafirs, and 13 thereafter. 13 verses about the hypocrites. What is said in the tafsir? Who in reality are unbelievers from within. From inside they are kafir, they are unbelievers. But they pretend to be Muslims outwardly. Sadrullah Fadl is quoting this tafsir from Tafsir Jamal. Okay? Now, tomorrow, inshallah, Lazim, I'll read those ayats. I'm going to read those ayats for you. Uh, up to where, up, up to Muflihun, I'm just going to read. And we're going to talk more about it. Tomorrow we're going to explain. Uh, the meaning of the word ghaib mm. and the different categories of ilm ghaib as per the tafsir. We're going to talk about that tomorrow, inshallah. Okay? Mm. And uh, just for barakat, uh, tonight is the eve of the 17th mm. of Ramadan, which is the eve of the battle of mm. the Badr. If my memory serves me right, it is also the eve of the Wisal of Sayyidatuna Aisha the Siddiqa. Mm. So it is the eve of the battle of Badr. The, 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 the eve of the 17th of uh, Ramadan mm -hmm. and this is one, this was one of the greatest battles in the history of Islam mm -hmm. this was the, 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 the massive turning point this was the massive turning. turning point after the battle of Badr in this battle we all know how many Sahaba Ikram, how many Muslims participated 313 mm -hmm. and thousands of Kufar mm -hmm. the Muslims hardly had any weapons mm -hmm. they hardly had anything they were, there were times, I'm being very brief about this, time, because of time, but for Barakat, that the Sahaba Ikram went to Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we got no sword. Mm -hmm. What he gave? Not even a branch, a twig, a twig, a stem in their hand. But they say that when we used to move that twig, it used to do the job of a sword. In the back. Sahaba Ikram had so few means, mode of transport that two, two, three, three of them were on a horse or a camel. So many of them were on foot, but come in fiatin, kalilatin, ghalabat fiatan, kathiratam, idhnillah. Even though they were few in number by the hukum of Allah, Allah gave them kamyabi. Allah gave them success. And such a great victory was at Battle of Badr that it turned the tides. It turned the tides. This is the same battle, the Battle of Badr, 
when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down angels when the malaika came down under the command of the angel Hazrat Sayyidina Jibreel Amin alayhi salatu wa salam Sahaba say we used to hear one sound we used to hear sound some of them say that we used to we used to just pick our talwar with the niyat of isha, intention of fighting it was, it was a battle of picking to attack those who the, 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 the Meccans, the Kuffar who were attacking us they say we used to pick the sword, but we used to see next moment before we even did anything, the person was down on the ground. Subhan. How was this happening? They say we used to hear one sound. Allah. There was a voice, loud voice, to was saying, Aqdim Haydun. Aqdim Haydun. Aqdim Haydun. He said, in other words, charge. Go forward, Haydun. Go forward. Later they asked Ya Rasulullah, who was this and what was this voice? Who was and who is Haydun? said this voice was that of Jibreel Amin and that is the name of the horse of Jibreel and it was commanding and offensive against uh, the Kuffar at that time so so that and during that battle the, 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 the Malaika descended on the plains of Badr and if you go to Badr up to today you will see that particular mountain on which the if you're going towards Badr you'll see towards the more towards the, the right you will even see the sand on that mountain is of a different color very glowing sand. That is the battle where the Malaika descended to support the companions of Rasulullah. And from this, the great scholars have said it is a lesson for the Muslim Ummah that in difficult time, if you keep your faith in Allah, if you keep true yaqeen and trust in your Rabb, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will assist you from the unseen. Allah will assist you with the unseen. Okay? And this is the same battle. This is the same battle where the big kuffar like Abu Jahl etc. were executed. Okay? They were slain. Okay? And before this battle, Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I'm being brief, Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went and he demarcated certain areas. He went and he marked certain areas. Abu Jahl will die here. This one will die here. This one will die here. And he continued marking. The Sahaba Ikram stated that after the battle, where Rasulullah Park marked, we found that person there. Not one bit this side, not one bit that side. Wherever Rasulullah Park sallallahu alayhi wa marked. Okay? So this also was the ilm al This was the knowledge of the unseen. Inshallah, tomorrow we will do the tafsir of this verse. Alladheena yu'minuna bil ghayb. You will better understand why this verse was revealed and how this verse is misinterpreted intentionally. Misinterpreted intentionally by the Bad Mazhabs mm -hmm. to confuse the, 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 the minds of the layman. Mm -hmm. But this alone was a sign of great ghayb of the beloved Rasul, knowledge of the ghayb of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And after this battle, this is the same battle where the Kuffar were thrown into a well. <coughs> they were thrown into a well and the Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam addressed them. He addressed them that I found the promise of my Rabb to be true. Did you find the promise of your Rabb to be true? Sahabai Karam were present, they said, Ya Rasulullah, you are speaking to the, to, the, to the dead, to the corpse. Mm -hmm. Nabi Karim mm -hmm. Sallallahu said, they hear better than you. Mm -hmm. They hear better than you, they are aware of the condition, just that they cannot respond. Mm -hmm. Simple thing. If Abu Jahl, Kafir like Abu Jahl, mm -hmm. can hear when the Nabi talks to him, then how is it that when we make salam, our Nabi can't hear? Come on, it's a basic thing. It's one plus one. It can't be three, it's two. Okay, it's very simple. It's very, very simple. A kafir like Abu Jahal, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, he can hear better than you. At that particular time, he is dead. Why? Why he can hear? Because the Nabi speaks, he has to hear. When the Nabi speaks, he has to hear. Because it is the Nabi speaking. And when the Ummah speaks, the Nabi won't hear. <laughs> Indeed, the Nabi hears. Indeed, the Nabi hears. There is no such thing that only when you are in Medina and you are in line with the Rosa Mubarak, then the Nabi hears you. Our Iman is from wherever we call our Nabi, our Nabi is aware. Zameen o tumhare liye Makin o tumhare liye